Welcome to, welcome back to my little Chanel. I'm Ali. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so. <laughs> I have, I think, alluded to this video a few times last year, I believe. Or I'm making, I'm pretty sure I have in like random reading vlogs. I want to evaluate whether the Fairy Loot Book Box subscription service is worth it for me. That's the plan, right? So I want to start uh, not necessarily a series but have like a reading project for the next year of 2024 where I specifically read my fairy loot books in like a series of vlogs and figure out whether or not I want to keep the service. Now I'll give you a bit of my like background history with fairy loot. I used to have the young adult book box subscription. I have since cancelled that subscription. I think I cancelled that, I want to say sometime early in the year, because as we all know, I have a very tumultuous history at the moment with young adult fiction just in general. So I made the decision to just like not have that box anymore because I just wasn't reading them. And if I was reading them, they were fine. Like, there was a few here and there, like Twin Crowns, like these, This Vicious Grace, The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea, Six Kims and Cranes, Belladonna. They were the ones that I enjoyed. Uh, but the other ones were just fine. But I kept my adult fantasy book box because it's just the book only and I really enjoy how pretty fairy loot books are i think they're honestly exquisite but i've i've been noticing a trend with me and that is i don't feel compelled to read them what's the fucking point of having a book subscription service if i'm not reading them there is no point i can i can hear you yelling at me so that's the point of this video right now is to introduce this project but also throughout the year I'm going to be doing a series of vlogs where I specifically read fairy loot books and rate them and then at the end of the year evaluate if it's worth it and the way we're going to figure that out is by the star ratings that I give these books so if I have mainly or like mostly three star books then obviously I have to reconsider a little bit if I have mostly four or even five star books, then I'll most likely decide to keep it. But I am aiming for at least a few five stars. I feel like in order for the book box to be worth the money, I think for me it's around 60 Australian dollars, which isn't much, but it is at the same time. Especially when you have employment that can be really like, you have no idea if you're going to be employed. So that's just like the way that my life is at the moment. And it can be a lot of money. It is a commitment, a monthly commitment, right? But I really love the experience of getting a book. I love the experience of finding out which book they've decided to pick. But I think I've said before, a lot of the adult fantasy that they give in this book box, are always it's always romance fantasy, which is not necessarily an issue. But I feel like sometimes I would enjoy just a like an epic fantasy <laughs> with no romance elements to it or a very little romance element to it or just like epic fantasy would be really cool. A lot of the fantasy that is given uh, what you would, it's kind of like that Sarah J Mass age group, like it's new adult but not, but it is adult, like it's this weird inter-between type of thing. I just, yeah, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> But I am hoping, like you would hope at least by the end of the year that I would have a few five stars. And I don't know how many I want in order to count this book box subscription as worth it and worth the money for me. But I think I'll, I will give like a number, the amount of five stars that I want, maybe in like the six month period where we do like an evaluation of what we've been doing. If you hear my mum coughing in the background, she is quite unwell. Her asthma has kicked in and I'm pretty sure it's created some sort of like infection in her chest. Sweet, sweet Alex didn't know what was coming. <laughs> that infection, it was COVID. <laughs> anyway, 
but that is the plan. This video right here is an introduction to this reading project that I want to do. Uh, I don't know how many vlogs I want to do because I feel like doing it monthly might be too much. But I would like to at least do it every two months. Again, depending on the amount of books that I want to read in one vlog. You might get monthly vlogs and I only read one or two. You might get two every two months and then I might read four or five. You might get three months and I might read like ten. Like who bloody knows, okay? But just know that it is going to be a year-long reading project that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to introduce you to the books that... I have currently on my shelf that are unread from Fairy Loot and I'm not going to talk about like the blurbs or anything I'm literally just going to show them to the screen and if you have any books that I'm going to show you right now any of these Fairy Loot books that you want me to read for my first reading vlog uh, of this series can you please comment down below so that I can make that a priority. I think that would be really cool to have a couple books chosen by you that I read first. So let's just get straight into it in no particular order. <laughs> the Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzon. Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. Son of Blood and Ruin by Mali Lars? Lares? Lares? The Book of Night by Holly Black. This is a very controversial one. <laughs> the Last Tale of the Flower Bride by Roshani Chokshi, Shanghai Immortal by A. Y. Chow, The Foxglove King by Hannah Witten, City of Dusk by Tara Sim, Poster Girl by Veronica Roth. I've actually never read a Veronica Roth. I think I am wanting to read the Divergent series sometime this year though. <laughs> and The Curse of Saints by Kate Dramas. Actually I lied, there's three more. <laughs> These are all part of series that I'm currently reading. The Dragon's Promise by Elizabeth Lim, Foul Lady Fortune by Chloe Gong, the Atlas Paradox by Olivia Blake. And those three books I wasn't going to show because they weren't part of an adult book box. They were ones that I specifically purchased myself uh, as special editions because they are the next in a series that I enjoy. But that's all the books that I currently own that are from a Fairy Loot book box subscription, which I don't think is that much. It is a lot, but at the same time, I think this shows me that I kind of at least do read through some of them but that's it remember to comment the book that you would like me to prioritize first uh, for my first reading vlog for this project but other than that thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoy the coming uh reading vlogs for this project and i will see you next week <laughs> take care and stay safe friends happy reading